I'm going to introduce uh, Victor Baez, who we are very lucky to have with us tonight. Victor is the newly or relatively newly elected General Secretary of the Trade Union Confederation of the Americas from Brazil. He was born in Paraguay, now living in St. Paulo, in his home now living in St. Paulo. However, in his home country, Victor fought against the Strosner dictatorship in Paraguay in the 1980s. He was leader of the National Bank Workers Union, and as a leading pro-democracy activist, Victor was harassed and jailed numerous times in his fight for justice in that country. He's Secretary General of the Trade, as I mentioned, Trade Union Confederation of the Americas, which has 68 affiliated organizations and national unions from 26 countries in Latin America, North America, and the Caribbean, with a total membership of more than 50 million working men and women. Welcome, Victor Baez. Thank you, good evening, thank you for the invitation. <clears throat> I really owe you Canadian people. This is not the first time that I attend this kind of meetings. I remember that uh, the first time was in Halifax. And uh, almost two years ago, I was also invited to a meeting to analyze the Canadian foreign policy. Our conclusion was that at that time, uh, the external, the, the foreign policy of the Canadian government was very much alike the Bush external policy. And I can conclude today that after some years, Mr. Harper misses very much his buddy, George Bush. <laughs> For instance, he will receive President Uribe in order to sign with him, President Uribe has nothing to do with the G20 or with the G8, but he will be received. He will be inside the room to receive the, uh, the, 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 the treaty, uh, despite the exposure, the denounces that we have made all this year of the attacks to democracy, of the attacks to the life and the integrity of thousands of trade unionists in Colombia. That is really a shame. I'll try to be <clears throat> brief just by saying some things. Uh, according to the trade union movement, the Declaration of Global Unions resume their critical approach to the neoconservatism of the last decades, using sound concepts such as crisis of distributive justice, casino economics, and social governance. We firstly, in the Trade Union Confederation of the Americas, accompanied the joint declaration of the Canadian Labor Congress and the American Federation of Labor Congress of the Industrial Organizations, drawing attention to the need of, ado of adop adopting measures for the families that had been cornered and presented a contrast between different types of social bailouts, social armoring, or social strengthening besides the financial bailouts that were taking place. Let me also remember the Ten Commandments of the Washington Consensus created at the, at the end of the 80s. Fiscal discipline, reorientation of spending to areas providing high economic yield, fiscal reform, liberation of interest rates, competitive exchange rates, trade liberalization, liberalization of investment, privatization, deregulation, consolidation of private, private property rights. In short, limited states. Looking at what is happening right now in Europe, those commandment, commandments are no longer applied just 
to developing countries. They are applied to all of the countries. And that is only one of the points. That's only one of the points. The other is that the controversial element is the rapid recovery of the IMF and the World Bank, the World Bank in this process. Who remembers now about the reform calendar that was initially drawn up? Now the IMF is the main consultant of the European adjustment process. The social Europe in a few years could be a piece of museum. And we were Canadians, because I always say that Canada seems very much more the European society than the American society. Therefore, I used to admire the Canadian society because I know that it is more equal, it is more democratic than the American society, but I'm also aware that we all in Europe, in Canada, and everywhere are losing, are losing rights. But our representative of the Aboriginal nation here in Canada spoke today about the spirits. And uh, I'm afraid that the neoconservative spirit is surrounding Europe, is surrounding many places. But the spirit, the spirit of equality, the spirit of democracy, the spirit of peace is surrounding other places. And it will be a fight, a political fight between the spirit of peace against the spirit of war, the spirit of equality against the spirit of inequality, the spirit of democracy against the spirit of inequality, the spirit of sustainable development against the spirit of profit. And that is taking place in places like Bolivia, like Brazil, like Uruguay, like Argentina, um, in places like here, in Canada, with you people that are, who are impregnated of the spirit of solidarity, the spirit of peace, the spirit of equality, and the spirit of democracy, which is very much stronger than the spirit of inequality and the spirit of capitalism. Thank you very much.